Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Bienvenue à l'Alliance Française en ligne. Uh, welcome to our online cultural programs. My name is Natasha Zavadska, and uh, here with us, we also have Sarah Diligenti, Executive Director of Alliance Française, who is joining us from her kitchen. Uh, she'll be uh, cooking along. And um, we have very special guests uh, today. Anina Bell and uh, her husband, uh, Sebastian Giannini, who have prepared and uh, will be cooking a wonderful French Riviera inspired spring menu. Uh, I hope you all did your shopping. Let's see if other people are joining. I see that some people are joining from their kitchens, which is great. And it's going uh, to be a lot of fun. Just reading the menu made my mouth water. Uh, but before we start, uh, let me introduce Anina Bell. Um, and Sebastian to you. Anina Belgianini is a Canadian American hotelier. Here she is, joining from her beautiful kitchen, a writer and a passionate home cook. She is known on her social media and her blog as Le Chef's Wife. Um, she lives with her husband, French chef Sebastian Giannini, um, their young daughter Valentina, and the baby Saint Pierre in their home in McLean, Virginia. Um, Alina Bell uh, met Sebastian, uh, a native of Toulon, France, uh, when she was in her exchange, university exchange in uh, the south of France. They got married in Nice and lived eight years together uh, in the French Riviera before professional opportunities made them move first to Canada and then to Washington, D.C. Uh, when moving across the ocean, uh, Alina Bell and Sebastian were dedicated to maintaining um, the quality of life, the French Riviera style, style of life they enjoyed so much in Nice. And they said it was relatively easy because of all the farmers market around and they love sharing their experience uh, through the blog, uh, which Anina Bell launched back in 2018. And uh, it was born out of love for food, cooking, traveling, uh, photography and writing. And Anina Bell uh, describes herself as a translator. She says that she translates the wealth of knowledge her husband, an internationally renowned chef, has accumulated throughout his life and work and boils it down to so that you busy people can use and enjoy in their kitchens just like herself and just like myself. And we are uh, extremely happy to have Anina Bell and Sebastian on direct uh, live with us today from their home, from their kitchen. And with no further ado, I'm handing it over to you, Anina Bell. Please, the screen is all yours. Thank you so much, Natasha. Um, first, I just want to say a huge thank you to Alliance Française Washington DC for reaching out to me and proposing this little cook along. Um, it's the first time that I'm doing this. So bear with me. I am really excited to be here. I mean, my husband has the experience of years being in front of TV shows and doing cooking competitions. And I have been cooking alongside him and getting inspiration from him and cooking for him and letting him be the judge of my cooking half the time. Um, but this is the first time that I actually get to share my cooking. Um, and my husband right here, Sebastien Bienvenue. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Bienvenue chez nous. <laughs> Bienvenue chez nous. Um, we speak French at home. Uh, we met, as, as Natasha said, when I was 23 years old as on an exchange program. We speak French at home um, and our language is French and we also cook in French is the way I like to call it, cooking in French. Um, because I think also the techniques that you learn in French cooking and as a French chef translate so well uh, to everyday cooking and you can really apply it to cooking from all over the world. Um, and there's a few tips and tricks I'm gonna share with you today that are extraordinary because Sebastian has taught them to me and they make my everyday cooking so much easier. Whether it is cooking tacos for my family or whether it's cooking Easter brunch or doing a really big special occasion meal, um, there's little tips and tricks uh, that make it much easier. So first off, are we ready? Who's cooking with me? Can you raise your hands? Thank you. And I wanna do a shout out because my mom, my aunt and my cousin are joining from Canada and I'm really excited to have them here. I haven't seen them in over a year and a half. Um, so this is a way to get a little bit closer in these times of COVID when we have family that is far, it's really nice to see them here. So merci maman, merci Giselle, merci marraine. Um, et bien bon. Thank you for being here. Uh, so first and foremost, number one tip uh, that Le Chef gives me is to read a recipe all the way through. So 
if you were just approaching this in your own kitchen, you may think, okay, well, I'm gonna start with the appetizer and then go on to the dessert will be last. But actually it'll make our lives much easier if we start with the dessert, because if you read through, it says that the ingredients have to chill for an hour. So we're gonna start with the moelleux au chocolat. Um, and if I can have my sous chef bring me some of the ingredients. Sous chef? Allô? <laughs> my sous chef has already abandoned me. He's not a very good sous chef, is he? <laughs> um, so we're gonna start with moelleux au chocolat. So well, I'm just gonna grab the ingredients. I have already prepared the ingredients on the side so I don't have to measure them out in front of you, which is a professional chef trick. So we are going to start with um, the 250 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. We use Valrona chocolate. These are dark uh, chocolate pastilles. Um, I have eight eggs here. French cooking uses a lot of eggs. We have 125 grams of butter unsalted, which is melted. Um, I also have 160 grams of sugar and 120 grams of all-purpose flour, which I'm gonna sift out. Um, and I'm gonna use the KitchenAid because I'm much more familiar with my KitchenAid. My KitchenAid's name is Sylvie's and I love her. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna melt um, some of the chocolate. So we're making a little bain-marie. Um, bain-marie is a way to melt the chocolate without burning it. And for anyone who bakes a little bit, you, you know this already. And it um, requires a little bit of technique, but it's actually quite easy to do. And I've taken a, a heat proof bowl like this one here. And I'm gonna let the water get hot. I have an induction stove. This is a recent purchase is this induction stove. We got it about four months ago. I'll never go back to electric, that's for sure. And we actually prefer this over um, gas because it heats up really, really quickly. So um, if anyone's on the fence with an induction stove, that's what we use at home. May I ask what brand you went for? Yes, this is a, GE, it's the uh, professional one, I think. Julie, a uh, profile. Thank you. GE profile. Oh. <laughs> and we have a daughter that did not go down for her nap because that would have just been way too nice to. Oh. Bonjour, Valentina. Bonjour. So I've just put the chocolate into um, into the bain marie, and I'm going to let it melt as it gets hot and it starts to boil here. But first thing we're going to do is um, beat the eggs with the whisk for a minute until frothy. So I have eight eggs going in there. This is going in for a minute. And then I think I'm going to add the sugar once it's beat up a little bit. So a little side story about a moelleux au chocolat because Sebastian made a moelleux au chocolat for me on I think our first date. Um, we were in this little, it's a Auberge Hotel, a Collection de France, that was outside of uh, Cannes in Origo Sociane, which is where we met. Um, and he made a moelleux au chocolat, and I say I fell in love with him over this moelleux au chocolat because it was just the most incredible, definite dessert. So, sugar goes in. I'm gonna check on the chocolate that is not quite melting yet. So we're gonna wait on the chocolate to melt a little bit. It's taking its time here, but it, once it starts melting, it goes actually quite quickly. I don't know if you can see this here. Um, speed, I set it to medium high to get the eggs nice and frothy. The wonderful thing about the recipes that we're going through today is that they're actually quite simple for people with no culinary training like myself to put into practice. And what I love is that once you get the organization down, it's actually really easy to do this four course meal um, within an hour and a half. And I had fun and did this meal for a friend last night as I was practicing it out. And it was actually incredibly stress-free because you can do the vinaigrettes in advance. You can do the appareil à moelleux in advance. And so when you actually have friends over or family or you wanna host your special dinner, you're not running back and forth from the oven. And that's my number one thing is that I want it to be stress-free because we have two young kids and we have busy lives and there's just, uh, not enough time to be stressed out in front of the kitchen. So my sous chef wanted to show me um, La Paris. This is what it looks like when it's already done. I've already delved into this. I had a moelleux au chocolat later, earlier. Um, it gets really thick 
soft and delicious and makes you want to eat it just like this. This is almost looks like chocolate mousse because it's in the fridge for an hour. I'm gonna watch this. So the chocolate is getting nice and melted. We're gonna wait for the pieces to melt completely down. If you don't have chocolate pieces like this, the Valrona pieces, um, then you just take a chocolate bar and that you, um, you chop it up really in fine pieces so that it melts quickly. Bring this down a little bit, it's a little bit hot. Anina, can you actually eat it as a mousse au chocolat? Because I have mine in the fridge already too, and I may not be able to wait any longer. <laughs> the chef does not, does not uh, <laughs> suggest it um, because there's uncooked eggs, but hey, there's uncooked eggs in the mousse as well, right? Uh, excuse me, Ma. Did you melt the butter? What's the butter? Did you put the butter in already? No, I did not put the butter in already. I actually melted the butter um, in advance and I put it just in the microwave for, the, for 45 seconds. All right, thank you. Ah, thank you. This is what the chocolate looks like. So this is just the chocolate. It looks like this. It's, it's, it's really yummy. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put it in directly into the eggs and to the sugar mixture. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, what Sebastian is telling me, the chef is telling me is don't put it in right away. You have to let it chill a little bit. And he's absolutely right because he just avoided a big catastrophe. If you put the chocolate in when it's really hot directly into the eggs, what happens? Scrambled eggs. So we're gonna let it chill just a little bit. Um, I'm going to mix in the butter first, and then I'm gonna add in the chocolate. Is that okay, chef? Is it okay? Yes, yeah, someone, someone else says here that it's very true that this recipe and the whole menu is very company friendly. Uh, we have prepared before the Zoom and are now enjoying the demo, says Carol Bloom. Oh, merci beaucoup. Thank you. That's really, really sweet. That makes me really happy to hear it. Thank you. Think it's chilled enough? Go for it, chef. Okay. Don't want scrambled eggs. Just stirring it a little bit to chill it down a little bit more. I'm going to put the butter of the chocolate in directly. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, these are whole eggs, white yes. and yolks. Yes. These are whole eggs, eight of them. And I'm just gonna keep it on medium low. Right there, there it's on mixer speed three. I'm gonna mix that a little bit. And then very important is to sift the flour um, as it goes into the chocolate, butter, eggs, sugar mixture. Stop this again. I'm gonna take this over here actually. Cause you don't wanna have clumps of, um, I'll show you. you don't want to have clumps of flour coming in. So this is what the mixture looks like already here. You can see it. And I'm just going to sift the, shower, the flour into it. And tap it in like that. You can see. So I didn't cut my finger with a knife, I promise you. I scraped it yesterday when dealing with my toddler and um, so it looks much more serious than it is. So now I've sifted it in. I'm gonna take this to fold it in and then I'm gonna whisk it again. Because if you put the mixer directly in with the flour right away, you'll get flour everywhere. I am speaking from experience. I have done that quite a few times. Baking is relatively new to me. I never used to bake because I could not follow a recipe for the life of me. But the funny thing about writing recipes is that you get better at actually following them because you have to be exact. And so baking in the past year has really opened up a whole new world to me. 
And Nina, uh, somebody is asking how much flour. I think you put the amount in the recipe, right? I did. It's 120 grams. I also put cups in your recipe. Um, and it's looking really nice. I'm excited about that. A little bit more. I'm excited to show this to you because it looks absolutely decadent as the dessert it is. I just want to lick that whisk. Someone is asking a very specific question. What temperature exactly should the, ba the butter be to add to eggs? I I think think not too hot. <laughs> <laughs> not too hot. Yes, I added the butter before I added the, the chocolate. This is what the mixture looks like now. So it's really nice and smooth. It's en trues. Um, and that's going to go in the fridge for an hour as we're finishing up before we put it into the oven at the end of our meal. So voila, first thing done. Tu peux le finir, chérie? Merci, chef. I've got the best sous chef in the world. This is so fun. Because normally he has a kitchen of 110 people that he's commanding left, right, and center. And this is actually the first time for him to be the sous chef. Kind of nice. Um, <laughs> and so this is what the batter looks like an hour later. But we are going to come back to the batter because we have a few more things to cook. So how's everyone doing so far? Good. Break my so <laughs> Thank you. I love who's drinking wine. Carole. Love it. Who's drinking wine? Okay, perfect. We're going to use some uh, champagne in the asparagus recipe, and you know that we're going to get into the bottle for sure. So one thing very important is keeping a station clean. My husband does not say this enough, is um, garder son plan de travail propre, la propreté. Uh, it's so important to clean as you go um, when cooking for food safety, but also for your own sanity, um, that you don't have a big a sink of dishes to get to at the end. So now we are going to go to Olive Tapenade. And I was speaking uh, with my mom. La tapenade. La tapenade. Tu non? La belle tapenade. Ça, c'est important, ça. Um, tapenade, of course, is a very Provençal recipe. And one of the things, who's drinking Quille Royale? I saw that. Perfect. Um, Tapenade is one of my favorite recipes, even though it has anchovies in it, and I don't love anchovies. It's one of the things that almost was a deal breaker between my husband and I when we met. The first meal that he took me to um, was at Le Padouk, at Le Padouk Mediterranean in Nice, uh, as one of our first dates. And uh, when the starters came out, he's, he went straight for the anchovies, and, and I said, oh, I don't like those. And he said, what? He says, mais c'est Provençal, ça. And yes, c'est Provençal, but I don't love them. However, in the tapenade, they are ne they're necessary because they're absolutely so good. And you know, somebody is saying that the anchovy scared her, but she, with a leap of face, she added them and it's delish. And my question for you is, do you use uh, fresh anchovies or the other type of anchovies? The, 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 the ones that are in, in, oil. in oil. Okay, not the not fresh the, one then. So, okay, not, the, not the fresh anchovies oh. that are in oil. Because there's, uh, there's French, fresh anchovies in oil as well that you can have. The full fish? Yeah. You mean? Yeah, no, with the filet. filet. The fillet, the Wait. fillet, in a, because that's what I have. I have the fillet, the fresh fillet, not the, the dry one in oil. I have the fresh in oil. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Uh, are these the dried or the fresh? These are dried? It's dried. Dried. Mm. Um, so here's the mise en place. We use little Duralex bowls all the times when we are cooking because A, it makes it fun for a toddler to cook with us so she can just pop things into the, into the bowl. Um, but also it helps keep it neat and I like to show the ingredients as we're using. We're using Kalamata olives. They're really nice and fleshy. If you can get Niswa olives, that's even better. Um, but I definitely recommend the Kalamata pitted makes your life easier. Um, and also there's little grain capers like these ones. Don't use the one with the caper berries, the big berries. Even though I love to eat those uh, whole, it's not very good in the tapenade because it makes the seeds, um, makes the grainy seeds. So I'm gonna first start by chopping up the garlic. Merci, chef. Very important to chop the garlic. Very, very important. But I don't have to chop it into tiny little pieces. I just chop, I'm putting it in like six pieces. The reason why he says it's very important to chop the garlic first um, is so that you really get it into nice little pieces inside the tapenade. If you leave it in too big of chunks, even if you put it in the food processor, processor 
you'll make the tapenade white and you'll see those big chunks of garlic where you want the garlic to be subtle in there. So we're actually gonna make kind of a paste first um, so that we're not adding the wet ingredients first. We're just adding in the dry ingredients. Can you see my cutting board? Yes. Yep. Here is the filet of anchovy. And I'm putting in the capers as well to make that paste. And putting in the herbs as well. So herbe de Provence or else um, oregano on its own, it also works if you don't have herbe de Provence. Um, it's not always easy to find. And I'm keeping the olives and the olive oil for afterwards. This is a little mixer I use all the time. We've had it for 10 years. It's really easy. Um, and we've often lived in apartments and so it's traveled with us and uh, doesn't take up a lot of space. It's a KitchenAid. Um, yeah. A little bit of, really? Okay, chef is saying add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, chef. Voila. I have a question. Do you remove the stem of the garlic? Because I've noticed with age that the garlic doesn't agree with me and the only way to really make it agree is either to roast it uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or, to, or to remove the stem which is inside the garlic because that is what causes all the stomach trouble. Do you have any uh, uh, input on that? Yes, often we remove the stem. Honestly, if I am not um, if I'm not mixing it with the food processor, like if I'm even putting it in our spaghetti sauce, my husband will pick it out if he sees I haven't removed the stem. Just to give you a little idea. Um, so, yes, I remove the, the stem from the Uncle. Okay, so what we have here is a really nice green paste. You can see that and it smells already so good and so fresh um, and I don't have pastis which is so bizarre because we always have pastis with us but we're going to use gin instead um, so and we were speaking about this earlier with Sarah is that if you don't have pastis you can use other alcohols such as ouzo or you can use um, even Marc de Provence if you have Marc de Provence is really nice so I'm going to add the olives in Someone is asking what brand of processor you are using. It's a KitchenAid and it's the immersion mixer. I have it linked on my blog. I have um, our essential kitchen tools that we use every single day and uh, it's linked in there. Actually, you can buy it off Amazon. So I'm adding a third of the olives in approximately. I'm going to mix them up. So I saw a question. Um, Someone asked where my husband works. He was executive chef of the Four Seasons Washington DC um, and just recently, a couple months ago, was poached away and is now a private chef. He works for a private home in Washington DC, which is the first time in our entire lives that he is not leading a big kitchen brigade. He doesn't have five restaurant outlets and a team of over 100 people and just incredible, you know, 24 hour service that he's offering. Um, and it's the most incredible quality of life that we've ever had is we actually get weekends together now and many evenings, whereas the first 20 years of our relationship almost, that was not the case. So I'm a happy mama. Um, and uh, yeah, it's opened up a whole new world that we didn't know exist. Um, very quickly, my husband, when we met, was executive chef of La Vignette Haute, Nord de Beau and then he became executive chef of Le Méridien Nice, where he was executive chef there for six years. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was executive chef of the Fairmont Queen Elizabeth in Montreal, and then of the W Hotel in Montreal, and then the St. Regis in DC, then the Watergate in DC, then the Four Seasons Hotel Washington DC, yes. and now he's a private chef. So we definitely have worked our way around uh, hotels and uh, cooking competitions, like. He was the official coach of Team Canada of the Bocuse d'Or, which if anyone knows the cooking competition, it's really um, a high level, it's probably the highest level cooking competition in the world. He represented the South of France when he went as a young, as a young chef and then was able to coach Team Canada to go to the finals uh, in 2016, was it? 15. 15? But you're getting a few Bravo chefs that are coming in there. <laughs> But to me, he's my husband, and we've been together since we were 23 years old, and uh, it's really, it's been incredible learning to cook from him. Toutes les olives? Toutes les olives et toutes l'huile. Et toutes l'huile, okay. Il faut bien mélanger avec la cuillère. 
Il faut que je mette le gin, chef. Je n'ai pas mis le gin encore. Okay. I haven't put the gin. He told me to mix everything and then it was done. I said, no, 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 I haven't put the gin. Someone is asking, what does the gin actually do? Is it the flavor? You need some alcohol on the taponade. It's very interesting. You need some, some alcohol on the taponade. The passion will give you this essence of uh, uh, anise, fennel. The gin, you know, a little bit more dry, you know, and it's a little bit more flavorful with, with the baie de Genièvre, tout ça. Donc, c'est magnifique. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this is what it looks like. It's a beautiful black color. And it's this black color because um, I mixed up the garlic. Uh, cut it up in tiny pieces before because I've done it before and left the garlic in big chunks and you didn't have this beautiful bl black color. I saw vermouth. Vermouth would be amazing as well. I think you can really, um, yeah, use your liberties with the alcohol that you'd like in there. Uh, as, I think as long as it's a strong alcohol, you'll do really, really well. Especially oui. mixed. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. So this is actually, Tapenade probably for six, even eight, depending on how much you love tapenade. But I do that on purpose because it's a little bit labor intensive. To, I mean, it doesn't take all that long. Um, but you can save it and you, it actually, can you freeze it? Yes, you can freeze it, but it's not the same. I love putting it on it's pasta. Part. I love putting it over meat. He did a rack of lamb the other night where he um, use the tapenade juice. Um, une petite vinaigrette avec de la roquette. Yeah, and in a vinaigrette on top of um, arugula is Faut really, really good. Faut la montrer. Mais comment c'est beau ça? He's looking nostalgic as he's holding up the tapenade. <laughs> um, yes, you can make it non-alcoholic and you don't actually even need to add the alcohol in it. If you would prefer for it to be non-alcoholic, um, I would not even add the alcohol. Uh, les toasts. So we're going to make toti, which is toasts in Provençal, or croutons, or croutons. Um, ah. So I'm just going to put that for a couple minutes into the oven um, with a little bit of uh, salt and a little bit of olive oil on top. We use pure extra virgin olive oil, and we use a quantity of olive oil, which is shocking. Um, the French Riviera cuisine is all about olive oil. I think people often think that French cuisine is all butter and cheese and, and heavy foods. And yes, we love those. And we will make French onion soup multiple times in, at winter time. Um, but French Riviera cuisine is really lots of olive oil. It's part of the Mediterranean diet and lots of fresh, very flavorful ingredients, I think. So I'm putting this in the oven. Um, it's at 350 because we have this already for the molle au chocolat. Uh, and it's just gonna let it get a little bit crispy. This is, like one, this is like a day long bread. Right? It's day old bread. And this is the bread actually. Thank you so much, Natasha, for bringing over. We had a delivery from Natasha of fresh baguette, baguettes. Um, and they're beautiful. They're whole wheat and they've got a great taste of the sourdough in them. So I'm going to put the tapenade here and we're going to get started on the asparagus vinaigrette. Now, I like to make, as I said earlier, um, the asparagus vinaigrette and the vierge vinaigrette all together so that you have all your vinaigrettes ready. And I never turn on the heat in the oven or on the stove top until I'm actually ready because that's what adds stress when you're cooking. So try to always prepare everything as uh, in advance. And you could do this even an hour or two before, you're, before you have company coming. Um, or even just for your own family so that you don't have to worry about it while you're cooking. We are going to start with vinaigrette. So six tablespoons of olive oil, the best that you have. Um, we also have two tablespoons of white balsamic vinegar. I was not able to find our normal white balsamic vinegar. It was out of stock uh, at our local Balducci's, which is where we often find this um, aceta de tierga, it's the white balsamic vinegar. So I'm just using regular balsamic vinegar. I'm also using savoura mustard. Savoura mustard is also kind of hard to find. It's a, it's a mustard with um, curcuma in it. Uh, if you don't have that, just use a Dijon mustard. Also works really well. Um, and then coarse sea salt, brown pepper, and freshly sliced spring onion. We use spring onion. It adds a nice little bite to it. And 
of course, champagne. So this is from Schneider's on Capitol Hill. Thank you very much, Natasha, for bringing this over as well. Um, we are going to enjoy this, and I'm going to use two tablespoons for the vinaigrette, but I think I don't have to tell you what we're going to do with the rest of the bottle. So a little known fact about me is I grew up in the Okanagan Valley. Who knows where the Okanagan Valley is? Anybody? I can't see you. The Okanagan Valley is in Western Canada, um, and it is uh, Canada's northmost uh, desert, and it's an incredible wine region. And some of my first jobs were in wineries in the south of France, or in, in the Okanagan. And, uh, um, oh, there's Kathy and Dennis who have family there. Awesome, my, my mom's there too. Um, yeah, so the Okanagan Valley learned to love wine at a very young age um, in, and, uh, yeah, I enjoy cooking with wine and enjoy drinking wine very much as well. But for this vinaigrette, we're only gonna use um, two tablespoons of champagne and it's one tablespoon of mustard. I just saw the question come in. So I'm going to mix this up. Merci, chef. I have the olive oil, six tablespoons. Chérie, tu peux me montrer un oignon entier, s'il te plaît? Somebody's asking about how much mustard. It is uh, two tablespoons of mustard. And I realized as I was doing this recipe that I made a, um, a typo in the recipe that I put twice the tablespoon, or sorry, it's one tablespoon of mustard, that I put that twice in the recipe. And that is an error on my part. And I will go back and write it again. That's the thing as a recipe blogger is you're going in and you're writing recipes, especially in my case where I'm writing what my husband is dictating to me. Um, is, is telling me and I'm writing it down as he's going and uh, I have, I go through the steps of proofreading it, but sometimes things get missed. Thank you. This is what the spring onion, onion, the young onion looks like. Okay, that's, that's, what, that's what we call in English a green onion as well. Yeah. Green onion. Yeah, well, spring green onion. onion is a green onion, okay? Yeah. Voilà. C'est in French. Du sud de la France. Voilà. So we have six tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of the balsamic, um, one tablespoon of mustard. Um, we have the ground pepper that I'll put in. I rarely measure out ground pepper. We have the Peugeot um, pepper mill. And I saw someone say echalot. No, echalot is different. Echalot is a uh, shallot. So that's a, a different flavor altogether. And of course, salt. Yeah, see, this is, thank you. This is an echalot. Or, wait, echalot. And Sherry, I've now been confused. So I in Sibet. And this is an echalot. Salad and spring onion or green onion. Voila. Um, and I have the spring onion or the green onion here. And you just slice it finely with the with the um, with the knife, and I just put one green onion. I would say it's about uh, half a tablespoon. I'm just going to mix it up with a fork, and it's nice that uh, you'll see right away that the vinaigrette becomes emulsified like this. When it's well balanced, you'll see that it gets a little bit thicker. It's almost like a almost becomes a paste right there. And time for the champagne. So a trick for opening champagne is always keep your thumb on the cap, even as you're loosening the cap. There are 180 pounds of pressure in a champagne bottle. And so you just don't want it to go errant, right? Voila. I had a little bit more pop than what I like. You like it to just kind of kiss the air as you open it. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of champagne. And Inabel, uh, somebody's asking, do you put the white uh, or just uh, also the grain of the civet in, uh, in the recipe? Both, but I only go um, three quarters of the way up. Okay. I don't go all the way to the end. The, en the end is kind of rubbery and it's not as good. Um, so the white and the, and the green, but the lower green. And so now you see like there's a nice frockiness to the vinaigrette and it tastes really good. Um, I'm just gonna have a little bit. Has a really nice special sparkle to it. Um, 
And this can be used on so many different dishes. You can put that over um, salmon, you can put it over fish or chicken or um, arugula salad. We did that last night, actually arugula salad with goat cheese that had lavender in it with this vinaigrette was amazing. So we're gonna make the Quai Royale. So now we have our vinaigrette. Merci, chef. So Quai Royale, we have creme de cassis. Um, it's just one ounce of creme de cassis. Creme de cassis you can find at most liquor stores. Um, and we just top up our glasses with the champagne. So the difference between a Kir and a Kir Royale, if you're in France, if you are ordering a, a cocktail at a, um, at a restaurant in France, a Kir is with just dry white wine and a Kir Royale is with champagne or sparkling wine. Cheers. Salty. Cheers. Salty. Okay. Um, favorite creme de cassis. Do you have a favorite creme de cassis? No. No, not a particular favorite that we go to. So I'm going to set this aside for now. And I'm going to do the vierge sauce as well right now so that I have that in advance um, before I cook the asparagus. So we just bounce around a little bit, but it allows you to be less stressed, I think, when we're safe, when we're serving. Um, je mets ça là. Je fais la sauce vierge maintenant, mon amour? Non, là, on va cuire les asperges. Non, je viens de dire que je fais la... Ah, tu fais ouais. la sauce I'm just going to set these to the side. Je prends ce bol ici. Um, so, sauce vierge is... It's called virgin sauce. And it is a... Um, it's one of the, the pillars of French Provençal cooking. Thank you. Merci, mon amour. He reminded me about the croutons, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you. Looking nice and crispy. Voilà. Beautiful. Parfait. Les petits croutons, les petits tortilles. <laughs> um, vierge sauce, again, is one of those multi-facet uh, dishes and is part of my, if you say so, capsule wardrobe of French Riviera cooking, um, which is actually a project I'm working on. I really think that you can have a capsule wardrobe of uh, clothing. You can also have a French cooking capsule uh, menu of dishes that you use over and over again. And Vierge sauce is one of my capsule menu dishes um, because, again, it goes on everything. And I will use it on everything from pasta to fish to meats to chicken. Um, and uh, it makes everything really bright. And it has all the elements of Riviera cooking that I think are just so extraordinary. Um, citrus. French Riviera cooking often has citrus, it has either orange or has lemon. Um, and then also it has the uh, shallots and it has the roasted pine nuts and the olives and the uh, tomatoes, which just make, I mean, it's all the best flavors of French Riviera cooking, in my opinion. Um, okay. And in this recipe, we're going to use it on, on branzino. However, if you were not able to find branzino, um, it works beautifully on red snapper or sea bass um, or any fish, really. Salmon uh, works really, really beautifully on as well. Um, so we are going to finally chop an echelot. Hold on. I'll show you all the ingredients here if you can see them. Uh, and you know, there's a couple of questions that were sent mm -hmm. to me instead of publicly, so you, you were not able to, uh, to read them. So let me ask you, um, uh, there was somebody asking, asking you about what step to reheat to re it. I, I guess he was, and because I was helping on technology, I didn't see the, I didn't see the question until now. And uh, mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know. And there was another question before that. Can you make all of all Tiam in advance, I don't know uh, what they, me they meant by that. Mr. Glusman, if you can rewrite your question in the chat, please, so I can, the, the question about uh, what you want, uh, what, what you were asking about making things in advance and uh, exactly what you were asking to reheat. Thank you. Oh, can you make all of this one day in advance? He wants to know if you can make the whole yes. menu one day in advance. Can you, would you put the echelots one day in advance in the fridge? Tu peux la laisser une journée au frigo. Yeah. Yes, you could. Um, I would prefer not to do it one day because the yeshalat, they get a little bit sour um, yeah. in the fridge, I find. And you uh, the freshness and the juice of the shallots. Yeah, it's really nice to have the fresh and the juice um, all together. When we're quartering um, the tomatoes, Le Chef showed me to quarter them in slivers like this. So 
when we're cutting, we cut, and I have a serrated knife. This is a game changer. When you're cutting cherry tomatoes or olives, this serrated knife makes my life so much easier. This is a Wusthof, um, and I use it all the time. So you cut lengthwise once, and then lengthwise a second time. And so you have these four kind of slivers, I guess. Um, and it makes it so that you can, you don't have big chunks of, of cherry tomato. Uh, it blends really well with the rest of the ingredients. Le jus de le jus des chalotes avec l'huile d'olive, tu vois, ça va ça va faire en sorte que la tomate elle, elle perde de son acidité mm. et de son croquant. C'est pour ça qu'on mélange pas tout en même temps. So what um, tu peux. what my husband is saying is that the um, in order to keep the juice of the échalote and of the of the tomatoes, that it's, it's better to have it fresh. And by fresh, it can be a couple hours, um, so you can prepare it a couple hours in advance. Whatever you can do to remove time pressure when you have friends or company coming is what you should do. Um, because I have done dinner parties where I have the stove going and I have five pots on the stove at the same time and um, I'm not with my guests and it's just not fun and it's stressful and I'm burning things. And um, yeah, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Uh, it's much easier to prepare in advance, have a good mise en place, um, and then you're just really assembling things when your guests arrive, and that's a really nice thing to be able to enjoy the moment as well. And I think that's all, I mean, that's what the French are famous for, is being able to... Um, they know how to enjoy themselves and uh, um, to live well, I think, and that's what's attractive about it. Am I not cutting quick enough for you, honey? <laughs> Actually, your quick, your your cutting is wonderful because uh, uh, somebody just uh, put in the chat that uh, she, the great way to cut tomatoes. She just learned something. Oh well, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's really nice because there's these little thin slivers instead of big slivers. Merci, mon amour. So this is the finished fierce sauce, um, and look how beautiful this is, right? Like, <laughs> it smells like the South of France, it's the capers and it's the chives and it's the pine nuts. It's just all amazing. But I'm going to continue making it with you because you are cooking alongside me. And here it's not as important the order in which you put things. So you can just really dump everything in together. Roasted pine nuts, I roasted them for a few minutes in the oven beforehand. Um, how to cook, cut a shallot, which my husband showed me. First cut in half. Where are you going? Ah, he's opening up the cupboard. So you're getting a really close up. Hi. Thank you. And I'm actually going to do something that's been bothering me the entire time. Excuse me. Is that better? Thank you. It was upside down. And so uh, I was looking at the bottom. My apologies. So to cut in a shallot. You cut it in half first, and then you're going to make long bands, um, strips here. And one thing about knife safety, which my husband has been really good uh, about showing me, is always keep the tip of your knife there. Um, and yes, we, I tried to go to um, horizontal screen, but I don't have enough depth of my countertop. So if I go to horizontal screen, you will not actually see me. You'll, you will see just the cutting board or you see just my head. So my apologies, please bear with me. Um, but knife tip, always keep the tip of your knife on the cutting board. Um, so it was one shallot, finely chopped. I have two green onions, finely chopped. I have a quarter cup of chives. I have a cup and a half of cherry tomatoes quartered. I have a third of a cup of pitted Kalamata olives. Um, I have two tablespoons of capers. I have a half of a cup of basil. Uh, three tablespoons of roasted pine nuts and a third, a three fourths of a cup of extra virgin um, pure olive oil. And then we're going to get into one lemon as well. So now that you've cut long strips with your shallot, then you, you flip the shallot around and then cut the other way. So you have really um, thin or little squares. Est-ce que tu veux nous montrer une, mon amour? We're going to let him cut one too. Show the difference between my knife technique and his knife technique. <laughs> so I'm going to take these chunks away. 
because these ones are not as pretty. You have the size of the shallot, you know, here. You have the tail and here the bottom. Did you see the line? This is why you can take, if you want, you know, the top in front of you. You just put the knife. And if you want, after we just, we are like that de manière lateral. And after we just finish. And we have something nice, you know, it's, it's thin, nice and thin, like that. So I will tell you, his are much smaller than mine, which will actually, it will make a difference in the taste because if you have the echelettes in bigger slices, then you definitely get more of it on the tooth. Um, Oh, I was very careful. I almost touched his knife, but I stepped away. In France, it's bad luck to touch someone else's knife, to use someone else's knife. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, but I can tell you in the 18 years that we've been cooking together, he's never once complained with what I've cooked. So do with what you can and learn as you go. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. And you get better little by little. So there's the echelot. Um, we're going to put the green onions, finely chopped, this is two green onions. So I'm just going to leave them uh, full, or do you want me to cut them in the half? No, no, no. Right, oui. full. Because it gives you, ça, ça donne un peu de consistance. La, la sauce vierge. En anglais. De vierge sauce gives you a little bit of consistance because we are not going to put three sides with the fish. It's something simple with a grilled fish in front of the sea, a nice spicy, a nice rosé. And finally, you have this sauce vierge came to give you consistency and all of the freshness oh, of the nice fish. product, you know. You don't need to have this, you know, too small. Then we're going to add the olives. And again, so the olives, it's the same cutting technique that we used where um, you cut them into uh, quartered but slivers like we did with the cherry tomatoes. And again, the serrated knife is a game changer here. It's important to have a little bit of a couteau with the arrête also to protect you. He's teaching me about knife skills. This is actually very, uh, it protects you to have this little um, ridge a there. A little arrête here. Yeah, there we go. So that you don't cut yourself because no one wants to cut themselves. I can tell you, Anina, that even though I am French and even though I'm supposed to know how to cut a baguette properly, right, with a bread knife instead of any other knife, right? Uh -huh. so one day I was receiving friends at home uh, back in Bethesda when I was living in Bethesda and in the morning and, and somebody was speaking with me and I was cutting the baguette. And I cut my finger as well, so I had to leave everyone there and then oh. and, and go to the hospital to be, you know, uh, um, I didn't cut it all the way through, but enough that that I had to have some um, uh, some splints, you know, for just... three weeks. So, oh, so, no. yes, so, so uh, as I was explaining in the chat, uh, maybe your husband might want to comment on that, but knife skills are part <laughs> of the basic culinary curriculum that people are taught when they do école hôtelière or lycée professionnel section culinary. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. For yes. Very, very important because the base and the training we have in France, you know, it's it's literally, you know, um, to compare with the army because first is step by step. The second, you know, it's you need to mastering, you know, all of the small technique, how to cook an egg, you know, in all of the different uh, types. The same for the sauce. The same for the vegetables. And finally, you know. This is the more important, you know, because you cannot cook if you don't do this, you know, it's, it's not the same. I think that's where France... For, for a professional cook, I'm telling this. France really differs from America in terms of the um, training, I think, that many chefs go through. My husband started um, cooking at age 14 um, and was an apprentice and literally worked six and a half days a week. Um, his day off was Sunday from four o'clock in the afternoon to Monday morning. Um, and I mean, we don't do this anymore. Apprenticesh apprenticeships like they used to be are wouldn't be allowed by law right now, but it, it's incredible the training you, you that uh, 
um, that the chefs went through and, I, and they really learn the basics and they learn, you know, how to boil an egg over months at a time um, or will be peeling carrots in Ducasse's restaurant for years before they're allowed to upgrade to um, doing something else like chiffonading mm -hmm. the basil. So I'm going to show you um, how to chiffonade basil. This is another little tip that Sebastian taught me, uh, taught me is you take the leaves of basil and you stack them one on top of the other, like like cards actually and then you roll them to make like a little cigar this is what your basil looks like now and now you cut so you have these really nice strips of basil that you can now add to your vierge sauce and it's really nice because they um they also have a nice effect when you kind of now you can see, and you sprinkle them on top of the basil. I love that. And that's great when you're doing pasta, you just sprinkle um, chiffonade basil and put it on top of your pasta as well. And then I have my olive oil. Through the so I'm going au pif is what we say, um, but it's, it's a third, uh, three fourths of a cup of olive oil. And then Lemon, this is one of those essentials of French Riviera cooking. Um, I'm going to zest the lemon. We use a microplane and, um, and it has these really nice shavings of lemon that bring a brightness to the dish. There we go. Just take off a little bit more from the underside and I'm gonna mix it all. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. I'm and again, asking this... if you can recommend a favorite olive oil. Um, which olive oil do we have then? Les Beaux de Provence. Bien le, les Beaux de Provence. Les Beaux de Provence. Um, so of course we use different olive oils. There's olive oil for frying a steak. There's olive oil that you're going to use for your salad dressing. And it often goes, um, uh, we'll use the most expensive olive oil for our salad dressings because they're not being cooked, they're not being heated, you're not distorting them. The ones that we're going to fry a steak in um, will use a, a less expensive olive oil, um, always extra virgin, but uh, depending on um, the usage of it, we'll yeah, use specialty olive oils. I also like uh, lemon infused olive oils. I love, um, what was the olive oil that we had uh, recently with orange? Is it orange zest? Orange zest, yeah. Moulin yeah. de Castellas. Moulin de Castellas. Le um, Beau Provence is, is a nice olive oil. It's very nice. Mm. Run, you know, something light, very fruit, you know. It's, uh, so we're going to show you. So now we have all of our sauces done. Um, it's been an hour that we're cooking and talking together. But honestly, when you're doing this on your own, you can probably do it in about 20 to 30 minutes. You have the Moller um, appareil in the fridge, which we're going to take a look at. The other fridge. We have two fridges because Sebastian is a private chef and during the week we cook from our kitchen as well. So we're hopping from one kit from one fridge to the next. Um, we have the vierge sauce done, we have the anchovy or the tapenade done um, and the asparagus vinaigrette and this is what the appareil is already looking like for the moelleux. So you see it's already getting thicker. So this actually looks almost like mousse. Um, and we're gonna put it in in a few minutes, we're gonna cook the fish first. Uh, so this is looking really, really nice. I'm quite proud of myself actually. So how are we doing? Are we ready to start cooking? Okay, so I'm gonna heat the water. I'm going to put a bay leaf in the water for the asparagus. That bay leaf, I'm gonna move over here. Um, that bay leaf is going to add extra flavor. One moment. Um, this is a chef's tip. We use uh, Bonne Maman jars to put our herbs and spices in. And we always have this uh, blue tape with Sharpies and that's a chef thing. They always have blue tape and Sharpies. So all of our herbs and spices. Um, doesn't look very Pinterest friendly, but that's the way we use it. So I'm using one bay leaf for flavor. Very small sun. Uh, appareil is batter, yes, my apologies. I am completely Anglophone, but I lived in France for eight years with my husband, almost nine years, and, um, and then worked in France and then worked in Montreal 
so my Fringlish is often what I'm using. Um, so I apologize if I go back and forth. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in the water just for flavor. We always use gros sel. Um, and then we have our asparagus spears here. He's tied them in a nice little bow. I'm not sure I would actually do this personally if I was cooking on my own, but it's nice to keep them really neat together. Um, and we're gonna put them in for five minutes. Thank you. Oh, that was just for presentation. He got me. So five minutes for the asparagus so that you have them nice and al dente. Um, I'm gonna set a timer because I live by my oven timer. He never sets the oven timer and it drives me nuts. Never. <laughs> he looks at the time and he says, okay, it's 4.03. Like, how do you remember that in five minutes you need to take something out? But he, he does. So the timer's on for five minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to get the new, oh, ah, thank you. This is cold water. And it's right next to me in a bucket so that when we take the asparagus out, we're just gonna put it directly into the bucket with the ice cold water, and then it stops it cooking so that it remains nice and crunchy. And I'm going to um, cut a little bit of this fennel here as well um, so that I have nice shavings. I'm gonna cut it lengthwise. Anina Bell, is this a cold dish or a warm dish? Warm dish. Um, and it doesn't, uh, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't make it ice cold. It just stops it from cooking and then you take it out immediately. So they'll be, they'll be tied. There's my son who just woke up. Salut Pierre. Bonjour Pierre. Someone's asking if the water is boiling in the asparagus. It is. Yes. I'm putting it on a, on a medium boil though. So I'm just chopping the fennel into a small shavings that are gonna go on top. This is for flavor. This is actually a vegan dish. Um, you can add uh, Parmesan to the top though, if you'd like to, or goat cheese would be delicious. And meanwhile, I'm also going to start the bronzino so that we put it in the oven. Ah. Um, if you don't have these, these are a game changer for me. These are called sizzling trays and you can actually buy them off Amazon. They're made out of stainless steel. They go in the dishwasher really, really quickly. They're linked in my um, Cookware Essentials blog post. It's on the top of my blog. Um, we have about 10 of them and we use them all the time because A, it's really simple with kids. You can put chicken nuggets on it and put it in the oven, but also it's great for putting um, fish, uh, um, anything that you put in the oven that's in smaller portions, you can use these and they're very dishwasher friendly and just, I find them easier to use. So this is going to be a couple of minutes. Je mets le poisson au four. Ouais, tu, tu peux montrer euh, les stems de fenouil que tu as gardé pour mettre dans l'eau glacée pour mettre sur la salade. Ah, non, comme ça, ils pourront ça, ils pourront parler. Pardon. Ah, yes. So we cut off the, um, the stems of the fennel and put it in ice water so that it stays really nice. And we're going to add this on top of the asparagus um, as part of the dressing afterwards. So you keep them in ice water and it makes them um, stay fresh. So this is le loup, which is, um, uh, I just lost my English translation, branzino. There we go. This is Bran branzino. And so I was really happy Natasha told me that she went to the fishmonger at Whole Foods and said, can you please remove the bones and the scales? And they did exactly that. And so you have these perfectly um, prepared uh, fillets. This was a whole branzino that's cut into two and has the bones and the scales removed. And what we've done is just sliced the top of the skin um, so it opens it up, the steam can escape. Uh, escape. Um, and we put olive oil on the bottom of the tray, the milieu de l'olive, and we're gonna put a generous portion of olive oil here. There you go. 
de les tourner pour que ce soit bien huilé voilà, avec la main. Non, je ne pas. He's saying, use your hands. I like to use tongs when I'm using fish. I'm always careful where I'm setting my tongs when I'm using fish. I'm going to put the salt right on the flesh. Oh. And, you know, and Jenny Barker is saying that uh, you are doing a fabulous job and she's enjoying it so much and learning Thank a lot. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're in my kitchen. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Merci pour le commentaire. And you want me to... There we uh, go. So now we're going to leave them skin side up. Um, and we're going to put them in the oven for 10 minutes. And the timer is about to go off in 15 seconds for the uh, asparagus. So I think we're going to be okay. Um, Melanie is asking what happens if the branzini are not deboned also, she's frying them, so should she open them? I think it's completely different recipe because frying is so not Mediterranean. So I think the taste will be different and it won't go so well with the sauce, but I'm, I'm not the, the chef here. I'm, yeah, just think, the, I'm just from the south uh, of France myself, that's why I'm saying that. I think, I we, think it's better to have this on the oven. Like well, we, we, have a, we, have a catastrophe, uh, we have a catastrophe at our home. Uh, our oven isn't working. Oh, no. Uh, just, you, just, have, uh, you, have a, you have a fryer? A deep fry. Oh, well, we could do. I can do stove top cooking. On ah, you can. You can put this on the stove. You know, it's very interesting because finally, you can keep. You know, the trimming of the fennel. Put this with a little bit of lemon, olive oil, and flour de sel, with the whole branzini, and cook like that on the bone. If you cook on the bone, I think that you can take. Yes, perfect. Yes. One minute and twenty seconds. You know. Per, per 100 grams. Is that mean this branzini, it's almost, you know, 500, 500 grams. You are going to put this 11 to 12 minutes. Okay, so I have, minutes. Cast, I have a cast iron skillet. And once it gets heated yes. up, it's very even flow yes. heat. Yes, you can, you can keep all with olive oil, flour yes. de sel, mm -hmm. lemon sliced, mm -hmm. lemon sliced, and the trimming of the fennel are going to give you a lot of test, you know. And, and it will be perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Bon, merci beaucoup. Merci. Okay, so I just, I took the um, asparagus out and I put the timer for 10 minutes for the branzino and I put the asparagus in the cold water and I'm going to put it directly on the plate. Is that? Yeah, you, can, you can put them on the, on the small towel if you want. On a small towel. Okay. Because we need to work the bread. And I love these. These are Bernardo porcelain um, serving plates that we use. Uh, a bit of an, an investment, but we have had them for years. So these asparagus will be nice and um, and al dente. I don't know how to say that in English. And the oven temperature for fish is 350, right? Exactly. So I'm just going to arrange the asparagus on the plate. Two plates. And if you don't mind, I'm actually going to take you with me um, to uh, show you our table because I put together a beautiful French Riviera inspired table. We have lots of um, blue and yellow in our house. And I think that the table setting is almost just as important as the uh, um, as the meal sometimes because it really sets the stage and it's really nice to have beautiful tables. So I'm going to walk you through with me through our kitchen. Hi. So this is our kitchen and those who follow my blog know this wall very, very well. Um, this is actually one of the reasons why we bought this house is because I fell in love with these shelves here and it was able to um, house our Le Creuset collection that we've carried for years. These pots, some of them are 10 years old. Uh, some of them are his grandmothers. Those are Mobiel copper pots that are his grandmothers um, that are really, really special to us. And so this is our table area here. I don't know if you can see. Voila, don't move over here. Um, uh, Provençal blue uh, tablecloth. I went to Creme de la Creme Boutique in Middleburg and picked up quite a few things. I mean, I've been stocking uh, these items for years and I picked up this tablecloth about five months ago. Um, and then recently went and got the contrasting napkins as well with the Brun Lavon. 
um, and the little bread basket. And this is where we're going to have our lunch. Tu peux m'amener l'autre assiette? Oh, j'ai pas mis l'autre brandino au four. I forgot one of the brandino um, fillets that I didn't put in the oven, so we'll put it in. You guys know to put both of the brandino fillets in the oven, I imagine. And Nina, somebody's asking whether the oven temperature you gave was for convection or regular oven heat. Regular. regular. What I'm using is regular. And often what you'll see when you're reading recipes on my blog is that they're made for people with basic kitchen equipment. Again, we were doing apartment living for so many years and uh, we had um, just a basic electric stove that didn't even have a fan element to it. And so, voila, that's what we use for our recipes. Um, I'm going to take the other plate beside these. And then somebody else. Uh, yeah. There was another yeah. question. Um, can, can you use the, uh, okay, two questions. Can you use the whole fish with the bones? I think that your husband answered that yes. when he spoke yes. about the, the stove. And then why does online recipe tell you to cook the lemon? Where does the which, sorry? The, the online recipe apparently uh, tells tell you to cook the lemons. Oh yes, I completely forgot to do that. My apologies. Uh, yes, and the lemon was right there in front of me. What we do is we have a grill pan. Um, we slice the lemon in half and we put it in the oven uh, with olive oil underneath it. And it creates for half of a grilled lemon that you serve with the asparagus. So my apologies, the lemon was right there. Okay, I can do that. Okay, we'll do this right away. So slicing the lemon in half. And then someone else was asking about the orange, but I think this is coming next, right? The orange is for the Branzino. Yeah, orange. We often put lemon and orange zest on almost everything, actually. Lots of things. Not everything. Um, lemons and we're going to take a look at uh, we're going to finish the asparagus dish is that yes, i'm going to bring this over here we have the vinaigrette oh. here oh. ah okay donc mets le citron dans la poêle there we go. So to finish the asparagus, I'm going to grate the almond on top. So we have the we have the slice fennel right here, um, and I'm going to grate the almond on top to create little almond um, sprinkles. I would say with the and it's nice because it's a little bit of a a crunchy texture. And these are marcano almond marcana almonds. You can also use uh, regular almonds. These are actually truffle marcona almonds um, that are very nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then we're going to put the fun. So we're going to take these little um, fennel. Dry them. This one is. This one is you see, we, we keep them because this, this is a fan of the fennel. You just put this on the salad. Like this. So the lemon should have a nice golden color to them. Voila. It's all part of the decorations, right? The you want some the original? The rocket, yeah. There you go. I'm going to check on the fish. Looking really nice. Two minutes more. Um, See, this is what the lemon looks like. It's really nice and gold, um, golden color. 
And that's just really for presentation. We're gonna put the lemon like this and then you can squeeze it at your, at your table. So if you want to make something look really nice and fancy and chefy, that's a nice little way to add um, a cachet to the dish. And then we're going to put some of the lemon zest on top. Thierry, est-ce que je mets l'orange aussi? Bien sûr. Je mets l'orange aussi. Okay, and a little bit of the orange. And there you have a very bright citrusy dish. You can see right there. And the vinaigrette is right there next to it, so you can pour it on afterwards. Voilà. For me, that's nice. Yeah, very nice. Bravo, ma chérie. It passes Bravo. his test. Okay, one dish. Now we're going to um, get the appareil en moelleux ready. So for those that are cooking along, this is um, how we do the moelleux au chocolat with the appareil. It's a little bit special because it just requires the technique of cutting the parchment paper onto your cookie sheet. Um, so I cut a parchment paper piece. I put a little bit of cooking spray underneath um, so it sticks on there. And then we have les cercles. These are um, stainless steel pastry circles that we use for the moelleux. And I cut a piece of parchment paper lengthwise. Thank you, timer. Um, mm -hmm. Cut it lengthwise so that I can make it into a circle here. And it makes like a chef's hat inside of the, um, inside of the stainless steel cooking ring. I got it, thank you. Our sun next to the oven, I'm a little bit less excited about. It. So this is what the Branzina looks like. It looks really beautiful and it's thick. Um, you can see it's puffed up. Is that good? Perfect. So baked fish is also really crazy easy to do. For people that are intimidated with cooking fish, putting a, a filet directly from Whole Foods that you've asked them to remove the bones and the scales and putting it directly in the oven is the easiest way you could ever cook and it comes out with something beautifully fancy. Um, and, uh, and the viache sauce is gonna go beautifully over that. I'm going to put the moelleux in the oven so that we um, move forward because it takes 20 minutes. So I'm gonna take the appareil moelleux because a moelleux is all about the cooking time. The cooking time has to be perfect or else you end up with a really dense chocolate cake. Now it's nice. Now it's really nice. So this is like a thick um, mousse type element. I'll get it then. And you have to be careful not to hit the inside the ring or hit the outside of the rings like I just did. It's a little bit finicky. French pastry is known for being finicky, but this is probably the easiest French pastry you would ever do. Voilà. Voilà. And you fill it three quarters of the way up. What are these forms called and where can we get them? So they are linked, uh, I believe they're linked, yes, in my moelleux au chocolat recipe. Um, you can order them off Amazon. They're called, they're, uh, how many inches? I'll have to, it's in the recipe. Um, they are stainless steel pastry rings. And we use them from, for everything from moelleux au chocolat. You can use them if you are making layer cakes and you wanna make small layer cakes, you can make a sheet cake and then use this to cut out small layers, which is a pastry chef hack. Um, instead of baking individual layer cakes and then stacking them on top of each other, you bake one big sheet and, um, and then cut them out with the molds. I'm gonna add a little bit more. This smells so good. Oh, I just got it on the edge. Good thing he didn't see that. Okay. So we actually have a lot of appareils de moelleux au chocolat left. So I'm gonna be making moelleux au chocolat for my neighbors. <laughs> so this is what this looks like. It's a little bit messy. I'm gonna put it in the oven before the chef sees um, here, but it's uh, stick together. Put it in the oven, it's at 350, still at 350. It's really easy when you have a recipe or multiple recipes that are all at the same oven temperature. Going in the oven for 20 minutes. Timer on. It beeps at me is always awesome. Voila, 
So now we are going to finish the fish. And in order to do that, I'm going to clean down my station a little bit. Um, this is the, uh, I forget how it goes, spatula. Um, that's perfect for removing the branzino from the uh, tray. Because if you have one that is too wide or um, that has edges on the side of it, you risk um, deforming, defacing your branzino. So it's a delicate fish with delicate flesh um, that is incredibly tasty, but uh, it's nice to keep it in its form. So this slides right on me and I'm gonna go like this. Sherry, would you recommend it being skin up or skin down? Okay. There we go. Pierre, que tu dis pas? Careful. Careful. There we go. So this is a portion for one person is one whole branzino because it's a relatively small fish. Um, we didn't put them in the recipe, but I do like to include a few caper berries because caper berries make me happy. They're incredibly tasty and fun and look immediately fancy as well. Thank you. And then the vierge sauce, which is just incredible. Okay, sorry. Chef says, um, a little bit more olive oil. Oh, in the vierge as well? Okay. Merci. And we're also going to put some orange directly on the skin of the fish. Uh, it will bring a beautiful um, perfume to, um, to the fish. So that when you get the bite of the branzino, it will have all the flavor of the vierge sauce, but will also have a little zing from the orange. C'est bon? Ça, c'est bon. Je peux montrer l'assiette comme ça. So already, this is looking really pretty. Voilà. Even if you didn't have the vierge sauce, you could serve it Mais just like this. And the vierge sauce. Alors, this la sauce is my vierge, favorite. We don't, we don't, on la, on la réchauffe pas. Yes, this is we not hot. We don't read the sauce vierge. A lot of restaurants, they eat the sauce vierge. We don't do this in South of France at all. Okay, allow me to translate. They, his eat is heat with an H. Um, <laughs> when he sees a sauce vierge uh, heated in a restaurant, right away, that's almost like a personal affront to him. Um, sauce vierge is a vinaigrette, even though it's called a sauce, and it's absolutely delicious, uncooked. Um, and it really shows the fresh flavors as well in the produce. Uh, and I like to put it right on the top. Christian pense Pierre. So Pierre is seven and a half months old. And my daughter Valentina is um, three and a half years old. And we are entertaining Valentina with um, Nickelodeon kids on the television because the kids do not fall asleep as they normally should. Uh, and yes, so the skin of the fish, um, my husband eats the skin of the fish. I like to eat around it. So it's really as your preference. Um, the skin of the fish here is absolutely beautiful. You could absolutely eat it. And if I was serving it for myself, I probably would have flipped it over and left the skin underneath because I don't eat the skin of the fish all the time. He does. So he serves the skin of the fish on top. So it's really as for your preference. And I see that Mary is eating something. Is it good? What are you eating? Yeah. I'm eating the fish with the sauce. It's delicious. Really, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Merci. 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 So now the fish is all done. We have a beautiful presentation here. Merci. Tu dois amener pour les assiettes de présentation sur la table d'entrée. Okay. He wants you to see the, the table. So I'm just going to walk you with me. We have um, 15 minutes on the oven timer before the moelleux au chocolat are done. I'm going to show you what the inside of the oven is looking like. They're right there in the middle rack. So we baked the fish with the skin. Um, Ah, skin up. Skin up. And uh, voila. Table. So this is what the table looks like right here. So we have the tapenade with the croutons. You can see this well. 
Can you see? We have the tapenade with the croutons. We like to put fresh rosemary on top of the croutons. It's just for presentation, stylization. We have the quille royale. Um, we have the asparagus with the fennel um, and the champagne citrus vinaigrette. Um, and we we spoke about the Parmentier, but we didn't actually go into detail of, of, about cooking it, and that's my apologies. But Parmentier is really, um, it's mashed potatoes, but with olive oil and parsley. And that's a really nice, easy side. Uh, for it. it is, and we have to specify, it is smashed with a fork. Um, so it's not mashed as we often will mash a potato that is really, that Can we mash. You, 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 Gold, Yellow Yukon Golds like this one. Um, so it's just really uh, squashed with the fork. Ekraze, if anyone has a, a translation, a direct translation, is squashed. Um, and then we have the fish right here. So while we're waiting for the moule au chocolat to, um, to cook, we're happy to answer any questions yes. that you have for us. Sorry. Anyone have questions for us? I, I just want, uh, uh, you know, on behalf of the Alliance, I just want to thank you, Anina Bell, yeah, and uh, thank you, Sébastien. Merci beaucoup from someone from the south of France who absolutely love Mediterranean food for, for having done this, this wonderful uh, um, uh, cooking demonstration for, for us. And merci, Petit Pierre. <laughs> um, this is wonderful. I mean, I love fish myself, and I eat it the skin. I eat the skin as well because my grandma used to say that it, it was, you know, very good skin, the skin of the fish for 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 health reasons. So I'm sure she was right. So there you go. So we have a couple of questions, and, I, um, and, and, and Natasha, you want to take over? Um, yes, sure. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, Oh, santé. Santé. Uh, do you do you cook with kids, with your kids? Yes. All the time. Um, it's almost impossible to take a pot off the stove or off the shelf without my daughter coming running. Um, she's the one who cracked the eggs to um, to uh, make the moelleux au chocolat. She's become an expert at cracking eggs. She's three and a half years old, and she's uh, um, yeah, she's she's always involved. So and it's it comes naturally because the kids are always around us. And this is a year that's been rather exceptional where we both have been at home much more. I mean, I work in hospitality and and my job was cut to half time for for this year. So it's been an opportunity for us to be at home a lot more and cooking together. Thanks so much for letting us step into your kitchen and showing up the whole menu. Uh, and someone else was asking, uh, someone else said that this is fantastic and please invite Anina Bell and Sebastian back for a second class. Aww. Um, also, someone is asking, could you use sauce bash with pasta? Absolutely, yes. 100%, and that's what we will do. Um, the sauce vierge with the branzino is for this evening. Tomorrow, I'm going to have it with the pasta. And those, uh, it's just so you know, the class is not over. We're going to take that moelleux chocolat out of the oven, and you're going to see the oozy goozy um, moelleux chocolat. So, oh, she's tired. She's tired. Uh, Melanie, Melanie is asking if you can put the chocolate in a little pot and eat it up. If you put the chocolate in a little pot and heat it up, meaning the chocolate batter. I, I guess so. I'm not. I'm not sure. Melanie, can you add? Uh, can you tell us? You can cook it, you know, in a small aluminium, you know, um, ramequin, if you want, and mm -hmm. it will it will cook, you know, for sure. The only thing is that you will not have the shape of the moelleux with a circle ring, you know, but. It will be delicious, you know, with the ice cream and shanty on the top. For sure, it will be amazing. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Can you tell me next page? Let's see the one. Attention, Kuto. Any other questions? I'm going to look for you. Uh, uh, oh, a uh, really good question. Can you eat the skin of every fish? I don't maybe eat the skin of Just every fish, but maybe yes. Sebastian can ask. Yeah, I, for myself, you know, I eat the skin of, of every fish, for sure. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it's good because it's a lot of collagen, you know, mm. in a cod, in a Chilean sea bass, <laughs> um, you know, the salmon, you know, when it's ni nicely roasted in olive oil or HUV, you know, uh, at the oven, like we have done, it's very nice on the white fish when the skin is very thin to have this HUV O4, you know, just on the oven like that. Why? Because it's a lot of collagen and it's very good. After the Chilean sea bass, for sure, and the red scorpion fish, when you cook this on the oven, it's more chewy than crispy, you know. This is why Chilean sea bass, salmon, red scorpion fish, John Dory, you put this on olive oil, you know, seared, and you have this collagen and the skin give you an amazing taste, you know. But yes, we can eat the fish and the skin of the fish. Nancy is asking if, oh, no, sorry. Someone else is asking if the Vierge sauce, how long can the Vierge sauce last in the refrigerator? Yeah, I would say a couple days. Um, again, it's the echalot, the shallots, the, um, the taste turns a little bit after too long in the fridge, but a couple days is good. Because Gibson is asking if you can substitute mustard with anything else, or you can, if you can make vinaigrette without mustard. Of course, you can definitely make vinaigrette without mustard. It's just a different taste. Uh, you can make the vinaigrette with just the balsamic vinegar and the olive oil. You always want a vinegar and um, uh, and the oil together. And I saw the um, moelleux to make it in a muffin mold. Um, you can, however, I would not suggest it with this one because the idea is that it's really moelleux. It's really um, liquid inside. And so by using the circle, it allows us to lift the circle off the moelleux and leave it in that perfect form. Um, and then, uh, and, and serve it that way so it still looks pristine. If you put it in a muffin mold, then you're going to be risking breaking it as you take it out. I would suggest to cook it more than it's less of a moelleux. It's more of like a soft cake, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you cook it for the time that we say in the recipe, uh, if you try to take it out of a muffin mold, it's gonna be a big mess. Melanie Lafort says, thank you. And the frying word for her. The frying Nancy. fish worked. She oh, said. yes. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Jenny Melanie says, ça marche son, ah. son poisson à la poêle. Bravo. Bravo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. 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 Nancy is asking, uh, she said the class was really uh, so much fun and she says that she couldn't find any fresh fennel, which I know because I'm a fennel uh, lover, sometimes uh, I have really difficulty finding it here, but she says, could we use fennel seeds somehow? I mean, you know, if, for, for, this, for the asparagus, yeah. you could probably use yeah. dill, but... Yes, you know, you know, if you don't find the fresh fennel, you can find the fennel seed and what is better is the fennel pollen. If you have, you know, a small supplier or, or a more generalist, you know, and you find the powder, you know, the fennel pollen, oh la la, c'est magnifique. It, it's amazing. Better. Absolutely. Use it 100%. Oh yeah, great, uh, great point. Penzi is, is uh, um, sells a lot of spices and he sells a fennel, a fennel powder as well. Yes, and fennel is the bulb de fenouil. Is the fenouil in French? Fennel bulb is a bulb de fenouil, and oh. fennel itself is just fenouil. Um, yeah. And the pollen, the pollen is, you know, it's it's amazing because yeah. it's more subtle and for sure. How much time on average do you spend home cooking every day? Sure. Um. How much time on average we spend home? For me, not all that much time, honestly. Um, because there's the two kids, because I'm working, because I'm also trying to blog and and follow my passion of writing recipes. And I think it's 40, 40, 45. If you have, you know, the prep mm -hmm. and, and the mise en place. Finally, when you open, you know, your um, your uh, tes placards. Your it's, covers. It's it's very easy because you have everything on your hand mm -hmm. and you have always the mise en place and the prep with a regular product you can use. So that actually, um, we worked together to create a essential French Riviera pantry list. Um, it's a checklist of everything that you need in a French Riviera pantry that we always have on hand any day of the week to make really quick, simple French Riviera inspired meals. Um, if you sign up as a subscriber, I think, uh, Natasha, you put it into the show notes uh, and it's in the email. If you sign up as a, as a subscriber on my blog, you get that PDF. It's a four page PDF 
uh, for free that we've put together of the essential contributor pantry essentials checklist. Thank you. Yes, it's absolutely amazing how you manage it all. Kids, family, cooking, blog, jobs. It's really such an inspiration. Someone else, I think, mentioned that also here in chat. Oh, thank you. I think we are motivated to do what we love. And cooking with my family is something that I love incredibly. And what I've loved about my blog is that it's allowed me to sit down and um, actually write down his recipes and write down the learnings of cooking with him. Whereas before we would cook together but so quickly i wouldn't have the time to really um and it's, a, it's a really recipe you know they are working yeah like his recipes they date from his apprenticeship and are 15 years old and are scribbled notes that he has in a red notebook um but these recipes are incredible like the moelle au chocolat c'est là le cahier um ah, okay. ah. This, if there was a fire in our house, this is probably what would be what we would save first. Um, if you flip it on one side is desserts, and if you flip it on the other side, so this is all of Sebastian's um, apprenticeship notes, all the recipes that he wrote as he was working as a young chef in different restaurants. Um, and on the other side is the salty recipes. So those were the sweet recipes, and here are the salty recipes. And so you have like tempura, you have foie gras confit, Dans la Grèce. And the funny thing about cooking with my husband with this is that he'll say, okay, learn to make brioche. And he will open it up. And I look at the brioche recipe. Let's see if this was a funny example. Um, and it's literally just the ingredients. And there's not actual cooking times. There's not the temperature. There's not sequence of um, when you are supposed to put one thing into the next. It's really just the ingredients and you go from there. So it's, I feel like I'm on Iron Chef every time I open this book. And, um, but it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a great way for me to test my cooking skills. And uh, it's nice because he never complains, um, but he does show me how to do it better next time. The red book, you know, sometimes if you want an anecdote, in some hotel when I used to work, I never bring this red book, you know, because for me, it, it, it was a waste of time. And I say, I'm not going to use my real recipe over there, you know it will be for the next it's like this is really um this is your secret sauce yes. as a chef is building up these recipes and why many young chefs spend time apprenticing under um well-established chefs because each chef has their book of secret recipes and they share with their apprentices and sebastian has always had an incredible relationship with the chefs the sous chefs the um chef de partie the dishwashers that he works with because it's all about the training and um and grooming them to be the next great chef. You want to show the moelleux chocolate? Yeah. I think we, we need to show you the moelleux and, and the inside of to see if what on the Yeah, I'd love to see. Back in the kitchen. So this is the messy part of the kitchen. Oop. You get to see it. Tiny kitchen. <laughs> but our kitchen is very tiny, as you can see. It's not a big kitchen. Um, we don't have a pantry. So pantry essentials are actually just these two cupboards. That's what our pantry is. Um, so it's really, it's all about space and efficiency and making sure that the equipment that we have um, works for us. Can you just sort them all out? I can't sort them out. Do you want to take Okay. We have a question for Sebastian. Yeah, someone is asking if you have recipes from uh, your grandmother, Sebastian. Yes, we A hundred percent. Yes. And she is amazing. Pierrette is her name, Pierrette Giannini. Uh, she lives in Toulon. Um, she survived World War II in the occupation. She also survived COVID. This woman is nearly 100 years old and had COVID over Christmas and Thanks. is in com completely fully recovered. She yeah. is a force to be reckoned with and is one of the driving inspirations in my husband's yes. life. Yes. We want to show you the moelleux inside. Can you take the camera? Oui. I don't know if you can see, you know. So it's been 20 minutes. The moelleux here is... It's missing, you know, one minute. It's missing one minute? It's missing one minute. The 20 minutes are good, you know, but because we take off the oven, let's let's see. If you see the inside, it's moving a little bit on the middle. Did you see? Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, you can serve them, you know, like that, but we are going to wait one more minute mm -hmm. to ensure that we can demolish correctly. Which means take them outside of the mold, the mold. Take them outside of the mold. <laughs> 20, 20 minutes is good, but we are going to 
Even one more minute. One more minute. So keep an eye on it, right? Because oven temperatures vary. And this is often something I say in the vlog, what 20 minutes in my oven, sometimes it's 22 minutes because the heat just heated differently. It's, it's really bizarre. I need to get an actual uh, thermometer inside my it's, oven. I know I yeah, don't have one of those. I think the 20 minutes here is good. Mm -hmm. But when you make this moelle the first time, you know, don't hesitate to put one more minute like that because when it's... It has to jiggle a little bit. When it's jiggle a little bit on the middle, it's not easy for you the first time to demolish. Doesn't matter if you have the right spatula. When you are going to put the spatula under on the plate, it will be difficult. This is why don't hesitate. Put one more minute and after mm -hmm. we'll see. But not five minutes or else you lose the entire beauty of the moelleux. I'm so excited for this part. This is amazing. Tu veux une assiette, mon amour? Oui, on va prendre deux assiettes. Meanwhile, I would like to read out this very touching comment from Jocelyne de Lissel, who says, Merci tellement de nous recevoir si chaleureusement. Vous êtes inspirant. C'était un petit bonheur d'apprendre en votre charmante compagnie. À votre santé. Oh, merci beaucoup. Ça fait plaisir. Mom, are you still there? <laughs> Alors, when you have the, the du temps jiggle, le micro, jiggle mais merci à tous. Oh, merci. When the moelleux jiggling a little bit, it's very important. When you have, you know, outside part, you know, it's a crust outside the ring. Here, the small crust, you need to take off this crust to the mold because they are going to help you. If you don't do this part, when you are going to put the spatula under your uh, moelleux, you are going to rip on the paper. You see, all of this small apparel, you know, you have on the moelleux around. After that, be careful because the ring is very hot. The ring here is very hot. You don't put the finger like that. Like he me. has no sensation in his fingers anymore. So please don't do as he does. And you put the moelleux on the middle like that. After that, you know, you need to be sure with the same knife, you know, that the inox, the ring. The stainless not, steel ring. Is not, you know. I have to translate. Yeah, please. <laughs> Arrives, you take off the moelleux. Un petit torchon, hop, on enlève. Là, maintenant, il faut démouler. On fait attention, on fait attention. On enlève juste le papier comme ça, hop. Et là, on a un moelleux qui est magnifique. Alors, why, why I say one more minute for you, but the 20 minutes is perfect because this operation, when you have the moelleux jiggling a little bit, is not easy. Now, we are going to do the second one. The same thing. The same thing. You can see, you know, around the moelleux here, you have all of these small parts. We take off this. Spatula. Be careful, always the end on the bottom. Hop, like that. The knife to be sure you are close to the ring. And to ensure you don't have apparel around. Hop, to the molds. She wants chocolate cake. She wants chocolate cake? Yes. Nice. Hop, you take out the ring. Be careful, it's hot. You, you don't, you take this with the rug. And when you have a nice moelleux like that, you know, you have a two piece of, of excellent chocolate. Very easy to do at your house. Okay. Okay. Can I tell you want some chocolate? Okay. okay. It's too hot? It is a little hot. You're right. Okay. 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 And both of, both of them. Yes, the parchment paper was greased. I did grease it. There we are. Okay, are we ready? Moment of truth. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it is so good. This is so decadent and rich. And when I say... I fell in love with my husband over this dessert. I am not lying. It is so decadent and just, um, and you can see just the, the cake piece is beautifully cooked and it's 
all soft and delicious inside and a taste of the dark chocolate. Um, I would recommend using the best type chocolate that you can find. Hershey's uh, chocolate chips is not as good in this. If you can find Valrona or like Guitar, um, really dark chocolate. Don't use chocolate chips. I don't recommend mm. this. I don't recommend chocolate chips. So we have two beautiful Moelleux right here. Any questions? Is this what Americans call lava cake or it's different? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, it's like a lava cake. Thank you. But there's what's incredible about it is that I think there's five ingredients into this. Um, it's just really pure uh, French baking. Um, there's butter, there's eggs, there's flour, and there is chocolate. C'est tout, non? And sugar. Mm -hmm. But the, it, it makes a difference because you see the middle, you know, it's jiggling. We wait one minute, you know, and if we haven't wait, mm -hmm. it's good because you need more and more practice, you know, to be sure you can demold this at the right time enough quicker, you know, to be sure it's not continue to cook because now it's continue to cook, you know. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're timing this. Like I would suggest um, when you're cooking for friends, uh, to put this in the oven as you are serving the fish. And please set the timer because you'll want to remember to go back and get the moelleux. And that gives you time to um, to have the dessert 20 minutes after the fish. Or if you want to have a more long uh, strung out dinner, then put it in um, if Absolutely. you're serving the cheese course, for example. If you're serving a cheese course, put it in when you're serving the cheese course. Mais bon appétit, parce qu'il est bon ce moelleux. Il est bon ce moelleux. On va le manger ce moelleux. Il est bon ce moelleux. Looks fantastic. Someone was asking again for the chocolate brand to use for the recipe. Valrona. Valrona. And we have, um, we bought big bags of Valrona, uh, chocolate pastilles. Yeah. They're like a... You can find this, you know, mm. with uh, another brand. It's, it's uh, Bari, Cacao mm. Bari, Calbo. Mm. And Valrona. They are two very nice brand, you know, uh, for the chocolate. And you can use this, you know, with dark chocolate, milk chocolate. You can also use this with white the white chocolate, chocolate but the white chocolate, you know, just things that you need to go down in sugar and butter with this recipe because the white chocolate is more buttery for sure. This is why you can keep the same recipe, but go down, you know, by 15% in sugar and butter to use white chocolate. And are the stainless steel rings also greased? Mm -mm. No, but the parchment paper is. Mm -hmm. um, so I used uh, nonstick coconut oil, but you can use any nonstick oil, or you just take butter and uh, and rub um, the seals because you want to rub it on the sides here, where it seals together, so that you make the little hat. And that's actually how you cut it: is that you just take scissors, you take a uh, this is the end of the parchment paper, lengthwise, comes out here. And I just take the scissors and cut it right there, and it creates this long strip. And I take that strip and roll it around inside the mold like that. That makes the little chef's hat. Voila. Thank you. Yes, I'm excited to make my own too. Thank you so much. Well, this was so special. They're so fantastic, really. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Anina, Bell, and Sebastian. Thank you. Ça nous fait plaisir. Merci beaucoup de nous avoir invités. Merci beaucoup d'être là. Non, euh, spectaculaire. Merci avec nous. Merci. Merci, Merci beaucoup. C'était spectaculaire. C'était très bien pour un samedi après-midi. Et, et oh. vraiment, euh, euh, ça m'a donné faim. <laughs> Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Especially for the fish. I can't wait. I'm going to do the fish for myself for tonight. It was, it was a, a, a great pleasure. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. Merci, voilà, Merci. Merci beaucoup de nous avoir invités. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. On vous Bye. Bon appétit à tout le monde. À table. Oui, bon appétit. <laughs> Régalez-vous. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir.